Today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be talking about elapsed time. Elapsed? Now, what does that mean? I don't know. Well, here are our I can statements for today. Things you need to be able to do in order to master what we've discussed or what we are discussing today. I can tell time to the nearest minute. I know most of us can do that. But we need to have that foundation in order to do the next I can statement. I can count forward or backward to find the elapsed time something takes. So here's your quick definition, explanation of elapsed time. If this time is when something began, then this would be the time that it ends. I want to know how much time that took. What was the elapsed time? So how long did it take to get from the beginning to the end is elapsed time. So let's start with a quick check, a few that helps us figure this part out. If we can tell time to the nearest minute, you have a clock, what time is shown? I would pause the video here and let the kids figure it out on their own clocks. Then we will talk about the answer, so please do so now. Okay, so we have um, the short hand is the hour hand as we know, and the long hand is the minute hand as we know. So we'll start by looking here, and I can see that it looks like it's pointing to the 7, and since the minute hand is past the o'clock, I'm going to say yes, it is definitely 7 or later. It was not going to be 8, and it's well after 6 o'clock. Otherwise, the minute hand would be like back over here. So now I know it's 7-something. I'm going to write a 7 in the hours and put my two dots, somewhat dots. Now I am going to... Look at the minute hand, and I can see that it is past the 5, but then it's just a little dot here, and a lot of clocks don't even have these numbers. What we need to know, clearly, is that each of these big hours represents 5 minutes at a time. So 1 is 5, 2 is 10, 3 is 15, so on and so forth. So in between, 1 and 2 would be more than 5, but less than 10. So each dot would represent 1 more than 5. So here's 5, so 1 dot here, this would be 6. And this dot, of course, would be 7. So it is 707. Now, we have to keep in mind, minutes are always done with two digits. Okay? So I always have to have two places filled in my minutes. So if it's 707, I cannot put the 7 here. If I wrote the 7 there, that would be a mistake because there's no 770. I would have to make sure that I keep my 0 and seven. I have to write it as two digits and I need that zero in the minutes. I only do that with time um, and decimals depending on the situation. I do not um, do it with whole numbers where I need that zero in a higher place value because um, theoretically this is a whole separate place over here. So our time was 707. We don't know if it's a.m. or p.m. but that doesn't matter. So here we have our second example of our quick check, trying to figure out if we can tell time to the nearest minute. Here is your clock. What time is shown? Use your clocks if you need to. I would pause the video at this point and allow people to use their um, resources if needed to figure this out. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, so let's look at our clock here. Um, again, our little shorthand is hours, longhand is minutes. So our shorthand seems to be pointing to the 9 more than the, I mean, it's pointing at, I mean, I can see it's even touching the 9 right there at that point. But I can see the minute hand has not quite gotten to 60 yet, which means in this amount of time, whatever angle that is in that amount of time, it will then become 9 o'clock and be pointing straight left because I can see it is a little down. It's not quite straight across, it's kind of downward, you see that? So it's not quite 9 o'clock yet, which means the hour must still be 8. So I would make an 8 and then put my two dots. And now I can go back to my minute hand. 
So again, I got 5, 10, 15, 20, blah, 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 all the way over here. It's past the 10, less than the 11, so that means it's after 50, but before 55. So if this was 50, and it looks like it's two dots later, I would just add 2 on to the 50. So 50, 51, 52. So now my hours, my minutes, sorry, my minutes is 52. So the time is 8, 52. Don't know if it's AM or PM, but now I can see a different time. So let's go back to the problem on the front of the opening. Um, we're looking at elapsed time, and we want to know um, if you can count forward or backward to find elapsed time of an event. And again, we're going to discuss what that means. But let's say I have this clock, and I first need to figure out what time this shows. After the 12, 4, the 1, here's this. So it would be what time class? Close enough. It is 12.15. Okay, and then I would look over at this clock on the other side, and I look here and I see it is a different time, clearly. Um, not quite to the two, actually it should be about halfway, because this is halfway. So I would say it is what time? Close enough. It is 1.30. Alright, and we're going to assume, for the sake of this problem, that this is p.m., And that this is also p.m., so we know at 12 o'clock it's switched, so this would be kind of in the middle of the day, a little afternoon, right? Okay. So in order to find elapsed time, what we're looking for is how much time passed from this point to this point, okay? So we have our beginning time, very important to always find out when the beginning... Beginning time is, and when the ending time is, and we happen to know both right now. We know the beginning and the ending time, so the question is, what do I do with that information? So I know a lot of you are thinking, hey, well, I'm just going to, you know, figure out what my ending time is minus my beginning time, and then I can figure it out. Um, but wait a second, what happens here? Alright, so 0 minus 5, can't do that, that becomes a 2, that's 10, 10 minus 5 is 5, that's, that's 1, and then 1 minus 2, I can't do that, so if I cross out the 2, uh, the 1, it becomes as, how do I, I can't, I can't regroup, I can't borrow, I can't, I can't do math right, well here's why, you see our number system is a base 10 system, what that means is everything goes by 10. So once I get to 10, I go to, I go to a new place value. Um, I, I go from 9 to a new place value into the 10s place. However, we know there is only 60 minutes in an hour, not 100. And because there, it only goes to 60s, we can't do basic, everyday, normal math, okay? When we use time, the reason our I can statement says I can count forward or backward to find the elapsed time is because that's exactly what I have to do. I have to, um, I have to do a count forward or count backward situation, and it's always easier. It's always easier to count forward. So to count forward, I have to start at the beginning time to my ending time. So everybody on your clocks, go to twelve fifteen. Let's go to the beginning time, and I'm just going to write that on here. So here you can see my steps, all right? So I'm going to I'm going to start with two simple steps. Counting forward of course is always easier. It's not always an option. Sometimes I don't know when it ends, but in this situation I do, so counting forward is what I'm going to choose because it's always 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 easier. To count forward, I have to start at the beginning time. So I'm always going to find the beginning time and put my clock there, start there, and then I'm going to count to the ending time. And I'm going to count forward to the ending time. Okay, so here is my clock. It's at 12.15. I'm going to count forward to 1.30. So I'm going to start with my minute hand, and I'm going to figure out how many minutes it takes to get to the next hour. Since I know I'm going from 12 to 1, I have to get to the next hour. So I'm going to start there, and I can see i got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 
45. So I've gone 45 minutes to get to 1 o'clock. I'm going to see if I can go another 15 minutes to get to a full hour before I get to 1.30. 5, 10, 15. I do. I'm not at 1.30 yet. So I know I have to go at least a full hour. I started here. And one full circle, wherever my minute hand begins and ends, is one hour. So from 12.15 to 1.15, that's one hour, but I'm not to my ending time. My ending time was 1.30. So I know I have gone already, I have gone one hour. I have gone one hour so far from 12.15 to 1.15, right? But I need to go to 130. So from here, I'm just going to count by minutes. So I'm going to go 5, 10, 15. So it took me 15 more minutes to get to 130. So my answer of elapsed time would look like this. 1 hour and 15 minutes is what it took for whatever event it was that started at 1215 and ended at 130. Okay, so here